Welcome back everyone, Alex Javaris here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own high quality canvases and panels. This is my second video on preparing supports for oil painting. And in my previous video, I gave you a few ideas for cheaper surfaces that are really quick and easy to make. If you haven't already seen that video, I'll put a link in the description below. Now, in my previous video, I may have caused a little bit of controversy after a few of you questioned the archival quality of some of the surfaces I suggested. And while I believe most of them to be fairly sound, perhaps I could have been a bit clearer and said that the surfaces in my previous video are intended for studies and practice and not necessarily for work that you intend to sell. But the surfaces in this video will be professional quality and they'll perform much better archivally. Because I'll be showing you how I prepare my absolute favourite surfaces to work on. Oil prime linen canvases and panels. In my last video I also spoke about why I prefer to work on less absorbent surfaces. So before we get started, I'd like to show you how oil prime linen compares with more absorbent surfaces like acrylic gesso and why I like to use it. Here we have two different paintings of women with red hair. The painting on the left was done on a canvas board primed with acrylic gesso and the hair was painted with a wash of transparent red oxide. Notice how the wash looks a little dull and flat. Now the painting on the right was done on oil primed linen. Again, using a wash of transparent oxide red mixed with a little alizarin crimson. This time, do you see how much more texture there is in the hair with the strands of the brush strokes being more clearly visible? Because oil primed linen is less absorbent, more of the paint remains on the surface. This means you can see more of the brush strokes. So using non-absorbent surfaces like oil prime linen will give your work a more painterly appearance. The first step in preparing oil prime linen canvas is to make something to attach the linen to. Here you can see two pairs of purpose-made ready to assemble wooden stretcher bars. And to assemble them, I'm going to need a right angle set square, a tape measure and a hammer or a mallet. I'm starting off by fitting together the corners. Ready made stretcher bars like these will have corners that have been specially cut to slide into each other. They're normally a tight fit, so you will need a hammer in order to knock them into place. I recommend using a rubber mallet as this will be much less likely to leave marks on the wood. Unfortunately, I think I lent my rubber mallet to some hippies last time I went camping and they stole it. So here I'm having to use a normal hammer. Once I've knocked the corners into place, I'm using my set square to check that each corner is at a 90 degree angle. This can actually be a bit tricky because you'll find that as you adjust one corner, it's quite easy to knock another corner out of place. I find this can be particularly problematic with economy stretcher bars and you can spend ages messing around trying to get them straight. Better quality stretcher bars tend to fit together more easily and getting them straight is easier. The stretchers I'm using here are a medium quality brand from a company called Russell and Chapel here in the UK. I'm using a 28 inch pair that cost me £3.70 each and a 20 inch pair that cost £2.90 each. So all in all, this stretcher set me back just under 14 pounds. I'm now using a tape measure to make sure that my stretchers are straight. As any carpenter will know, for this to be a perfect rectangle, 
the diagonals need to measure exactly the same. Once the stretcher bars have been assembled, I'm next going to cut the linen to size. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I prepare the canvases I normally work on using unprimed raw linen. The linen I'm using here is an extra fine 200 DSM Belgium linen from Russell and Chapel that costs £35 per metre. I need to cut the linen so that there's approximately a stretcher bar's width spare around each side. So here I'm placing the stretcher next to the edge of the linen and using a piece of charcoal to mark the inside edge. I'll then move the stretcher so that its outside edges are next to the marks I've just made and then I'll indicate the outside edges on the other side. I'll move the stretcher again so its inside edge is next to the marks I've just made for its outside edge and I'll indicate the outside edge once more. So this gives me an extra stretcher bar's width around the whole thing. Once I've measured the linen that I'm going to need, I'll cut it out with a pair of scissors. This piece measures approximately 80 by 60 centimetres. If you divide that into the piece of linen that I bought for £35, which measures 100 by 213 centimetres, this piece costs a little under £8. Once the linen's been cut out, I then need to attach it to the stretcher bars which I'll do by folding it over and stapling it to the back. I'll start by placing staples in the middle of each of the stretcher bars, the top, bottom and sides. And I'm being careful not to pull the linen too tight. I'll then work outwards from the middle, placing a staple either side a few fingers width apart. When I've done one side, I'll move to the opposite side, once again placing a staple either side of the middle a few finger widths apart. I'll then do the same for the top and bottom. From there, I'll continue moving around the canvas, placing two staples at a time on each side, working outwards from the middle towards the corners. And remember, you don't need to pull the canvas too tight because you'll be applying a glue size later on that will stretch it. Once the sides have all been stapled, I then need to fold down the corners. I'll start by folding a sharp crease in the fabric at the top of the stretcher and another at the side. I'll then fold back the fabric at the side and fold the fabric at the top over it. This is just like folding sheets around the corners of a mattress when you're making your bed. And as you can see, it looks fairly tidy. Then, after folding each corner, I staple it back. And with the raw linen now attached to the stretcher bars, it's ready for the next stage of the process. Sizing the linen with rabbit skin glue. Rabbit skin glue comes either ready-made or in granules. A kilo of granules normally costs around £20. And you only need a small quantity to make enough size for quite a few canvases. I normally use one part granules to ten parts water. So preparing your own size from granules is definitely the cheaper option. If you store them correctly so that they don't get wet, a kilo of granules will literally last you years. After adding the water, you need to leave the granules to soak overnight. By the next day, they will have expanded, absorbing all the water. You then need to heat the granules gently until they've melted, but you mustn't let them boil. Once all the granules have been turned into a liquid, the rabbit skin glue is ready to be applied to the linen. 
To start off, you first need to apply the glue to the sides of the stretchers. As you can see, I'm using a large brush, but the glue can also be applied with a sponge. Once the sides have all been done, you can then start applying glue to the front, working from the outside towards the middle until all of the linen is covered. The purpose of the rabbit skin glue is to seal or size the linen, filling in all the gaps in preparation for applying the ground. Rabbit skin glue has traditionally been used as a size for oil painting for many hundreds of years. But you will hear conservators say that because it absorbs atmospheric moisture, it can crack with time. They sometimes recommend PVA size as an alternative, but PVA size is a lot more expensive. And while we still have paintings from hundreds of years ago that were sized with rabbit skin glue, we don't really know how well PVA will perform in hundreds of years. Working on linen instead of wood is in itself less stable, not to mention all the pigments and mediums. How well will any of it survive? I hear artists talking about archival quality, and if I'm completely honest, I've never been too hung up about it. I've always been more concerned with actually getting better at painting, because it doesn't matter how long your work survives, if it isn't good enough to sell in the first place. The surfaces in this video are not my favourite surfaces because of how long they will last, but because of how they feel to work on. Once you have covered all of the linen with glue, you can leave it to dry overnight. Just make sure you lay it down flat. Once it's dried, the linen will have stretched completely tight like a drum. But with just one coat of glue, you'll still find areas around the edges where the linen will have buckled like this. So you need to apply a second coat. Overnight, the glue will have set solid and you'll need to heat it once more in order to melt it. So make sure you prepare enough glue for two coats on all of the canvases you want to make. Once the glue is ready, brush down the canvas to remove any dust, then start applying the second coat. This time, you don't need to worry about the sides, only the front. Once again, I'm working from the sides towards the middle you'll find the second coat requires less glue and spreads more easily. Then, when you've finished applying the second coat to all the canvases you want to make, you need to throw the rest of the glue away. Once it's been made, rabbit skin glue goes off pretty quickly, so it can't be stored for very long. You can only make enough for one batch of canvases at a time and you need to apply both coats a day apart. After leaving it another night, the linen has now dried completely flat, and as you can see, the buckling around the edges has all gone. You should only ever need two coats of glue when sizing your canvas. If you still have buckling after the second coat, it usually means the glue is too thick and you haven't used enough water. Once it's been sized, the linen is now ready for priming. The ground I use is this oil primer by Roberson & Co, which I get for £24 a litre. Before applying the ground, make sure you stir it well. I then start by applying the ground to each of the sides. When all the sides have been done, I'll then start applying the ground to the front. I'm using a large brush to scrub a thin layer of primer 
all over the linen. Traditionally, lead-based primers would have been used as grounds, and while these are still available, they're more expensive and harder to find. They also have another major drawback, they take six months to dry. I've tried using lead-based ground, and they do have more body, meaning that you can create more interesting textures when you apply them with a brush like this. But as far as the absorbency of the surface goes, I can hardly notice the difference between lead-based and normal alkyd-based oil primers, so I can't be bothered to wait six months before I can use a canvas. The Robeson's oil primer I'm using says it takes 16 hours to dry. Here, I'm using a palette knife to remove any loose hairs from the brush and to scrape back the primer in a few places to add a bit more texture. Now I personally prefer the more varied texture you get when you apply the primer with a brush. But if you want a more even finish, this can be achieved by applying the primer with a palette knife. You use the knife to trowel the primer on, then scrape it back to give you a thin, even layer. After leaving the first coat to dry overnight, I then apply a second coat of oil primer. For me, two coats has exactly the right level of absorbency that I like to work on. But if you prefer something a little more absorbent, then one coat will do. Though some artists prefer an even less absorbent surface and apply three coats. This is the reason I like to make my canvases from scratch using raw linen. Because of the control it gives me over the quality of the surface, I can make it exactly the way I like it. Applying the primer with a brush also gives me a much more interesting texture than pre-primed linen. Using raw linen is also a lot cheaper. A metre of pre-primed Belgian linen from Russell and Chapel costs £80. And if you were to buy a ready-made canvas this size made with oil prime linen, it would cost you around £90. But using raw linen is more labour intensive in that each canvas takes four days to make while you wait for each layer to dry. So I usually buy a metre or two of linen and make ten or so canvases at a time. Here, once again, I'm using the palette knife to remove any loose hairs and to add a bit more texture. Then, once I've finished the second coat of primer, I'll leave it to dry. This will supposedly be okay to work on the next day, but I'll usually leave it at least a week before using it. However, there are times when I'll need to start a painting, for a commission say, and I won't have had time to prepare any of my own canvases. So I'll have to make one with pre-primed linen, like you see here, as this can be done very quickly. In order to stretch pre-primed linen, you'll first need a set of canvas pliers like these. I'll start in the middle of the top stretcher. This time, however, stapling the linen to the side of the stretcher bar rather than the back. I will then turn the canvas around and staple the linen to the opposite side. Pulling the canvas as tight as it will go with my hand. Next, I'll place a staple in the middle of one of the sides. You don't want the linen in the middle of the canvas to be stretched too tight. So I recommend for the first four staples, stretching the canvas by hand rather than using the pliers. Then, once I've attached the linen to the middle of each side, I will place a staple 
either side of the one in the middle, just like I did with the raw linen. This time, however, I'm using the canvas pliers to grip the linen firmly, with the curved side facing downwards towards the wood. Then I'm bending them back to pull the linen really tight before placing a staple into the side of the stretcher bar. When I've done one side, I'll move to the opposite side. Then I'll do the same thing for the top and bottom, placing staples either side of the middle and pulling the linen really tight with the pliers. Here you can see how the linen is stretched tight across the middle of the stretcher bars, but still loose around the corners. From here, I'll continue working outwards from the middle towards the corners, placing two staples into the sides of each stretcher bar, either side of the middle. When I've placed two staples in one side, I'll move to the opposite side and then to the top and bottom until I get to the corners. Stretching pre-primed linen this way with canvas pliers might be quicker than using raw linen, but it's a lot more strenuous. I find you need to apply quite a lot of force when bending back the pliers. And the pliers that I'm using are quite expensive, costing £75, because I've snapped several cheaper pairs stretching pre-primed linen. The other thing I find with pre-primed linen is that you sometimes get buckles in between the staples if the linen hasn't been tightened consistently enough. You can usually get rid of these by gripping the linen in between the staples with the pliers and pulling it tighter. This is another reason I prefer to use raw linen. Applying a size and letting that do all the stretching as it dries might take longer, but it can be a lot more straightforward. Another thing you can do to remove any buckles is to use wooden canvas keys like these. You will normally be given a load whenever you buy any stretcher bars. And what you need to do is insert a pair of keys into the small grooves you will find on the inside of each corner. Then, when you have placed two keys in each of the corners, you take a hammer and you knock them into the stretcher bars. This will wedge the keys further into the corners creating space between them and expanding the stretcher bars. However, when stretching your own canvas, you will rarely need keys, as you should be able to get it tight enough without them. Then, when I've stapled the linen along each of the sides, I once again need to fold back the corners. In exactly the same way as I did earlier with the raw linen. And after stapling the corners down to hold them in place, I have an oil primed linen canvas that's ready to use. Including the time I spent fitting together the stretcher bars, this canvas took a little over half an hour to make. There's also another way you can use pre-primed linen, and that's by gluing it to panels. You can use wooden panels made of plywood or MDF. But the panels I'm going to be using are made of a product called Gator Foam, which is a polystyrene foam like you find in other foam boards that you use for mounting. But Gator Foam is waterproof and also acid free, so it's archival. The 50 by 40 centimeter sheet that I'm using here costs £10.20, so it's more expensive than wood. But I like using it because it's much lighter than wood and you can cut it down to size with a scalpel rather than using a jigsaw. The panels that I'm making here are 10 by 7 inch panels that I use for landscape painting. 
Once you've got the panels, the next step is to cut out a piece of pre-primed linen that's slightly larger than your panel. A centimetre or so around each side will do. Then you want to cover your panel with PVA glue. I'm using acid free archival quality PVA. But if you're only making them for studies and you're not bothered about how long they'll last, you can use normal PVA. You just need to make sure the panel is completely covered with glue. If you leave any gaps, you'll get bubbles under the linen. And you particularly need to make sure there's plenty of glue around each of the corners. After giving the linen a quick wipe to remove any dust, you then want to place your glue covered panel onto the back of the linen. Pressing it down firmly. Next, I'm turning the panel over and I'm going over the linen with a roller to make sure I remove any air bubbles. Here, I'm pressing down around the edges of the panel because you will sometimes end up with a few small bubbles around the edges, which isn't the end of the world. I find the best way to minimise these is to be quite generous with the glue. Now, if you don't happen to have a roller, you can also use a roll of paper towel to remove any air bubbles behind the linen. Then, when I'm happy the linen is completely flat and adhered to the panel, I will turn it over, place a weight on its back and leave it to dry overnight. Then, once it's dried, all that remains is to trim the excess linen from the sides of the panel using a scalpel. And there we have an oil primed linen panel that's ready to use. Now, for my landscaping panels, I actually prefer a bit more texture than you get with pre-primed linen. So here I'm adding texture by applying an extra coat of oil primer with a brush. So this turned out to be quite an in-depth video showing you how I prepare my favourite oil painting surfaces. For those of you who are interested in making your own better quality supports, I hope this has given you a few ideas you can try. My next video will be on the best kind of oil paints to use and which colours to buy. So until then, good luck with your painting and thank you for watching.